understand? What make you change something? Is it the action of doing it or something that prior happened to make you change, you know? Because we got different domains in life and doing those different domains, they affect different changes. And have you ever just thought about the most important changes in your life and how that has affected the rest of your life? And if you had to model your life off your top five changes, how would that affect you moving forward and to completing your full person? And everybody is different, definitely, definitely, definitely. But I'm like the five things that like change me and help me complete who I am today. It would definitely have to be the first time I got fired from a job, man. And I said the first time I got fired from a job, it was, I was working at Sears and my dad girlfriend had got me the job. And my dad close friend was a manager at the job. So I had mad connections to work at Sears. And I'm 16, just turned 16 working at Sears. So I'm mad popular, you know, and I got fired due to making a lot of incorrect things at work. And I would say 2020 hindsight, I wasn't comfortable asking for help because I'm used to knowing everything and I didn't want them to view me as somebody who don't know what they're doing. So me getting fired was like, uh, okay. And the second one would be missing prom. All right. Now, there's a lot of stories about why I didn't go to prom. And being honest, I didn't go to prom because I had a date to the prom. And the point of going to the prom was to have fun. And I didn't feel like I was going to have fun with my date because me and my date hung out all the time. So I didn't see the significance in prom. So I had money. And the money I had was I had to make a decision between going to the prom and going to submit my housing application for college. The deadline came and it was, I had a check. The check was gonna be used for that prom or the check was gonna be used for the housing. Now, my girlfriend, the mommy would ride or die. So like, I could have asked her, Hey, can you give me the money? Because I had a job, but I used to have the money for both of them at the moment. And she would have gave me the money. And she even told me she would have gave me the money if I didn't have it. So when I told her why I didn't want to go, uh -huh. and that was critical for me because literally when I made the decision not to go, two days later, my ex-girlfriend asked me, are you still going to the prom with me? And I was like... Yeah, I guess I'll go to the prom. Everybody made it seem like prom was important. And I felt guilty for not going to the prom with my current. So I went with my ex. Which led to me lying about the whole situation. When 2020 hindsight, I could have been real. And I could have went to the prom with both of them and had no problems. Dun, 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 dun. My third one was... Um, when I was going to University of Tennessee at Martin and I wanted to go to University of Memphis. And my main reason for going to University of Memphis was to get out of my UT Martin situation. Me and my best friend, we were living together as dorms, but we had different philosophies on life, you know? And it was affecting my future projections. And I noticed this, but I didn't know how to communicate with him because we had created this bond for like three years. And I didn't want to break that bond because I wanted to do something differently. And I didn't know how to communicate with him. And he later found out I was planning to go because I had did the whole application, got accepted. And he was like, well, why you didn't tell me? And, you know, we later talked about it. And I didn't tell him because I didn't want him to affect me making my decision because I had that issue with my mom my mom would influence me because I would tell her my plan 
So I just developed this whole thing where I don't tell people my plan because I'm going to do it regardless. And I don't want you to attempt to affect me making those changes because that's what I really I'm going to do, you know. So the fourth one would be definitely um, when my recruiter had a conversation with me. I had dreadlocks and they was like about shoulder length and you know, it's a big thing when you are like in your early 20s, high teens, when you got hair. Hair is critical because hair gives you a significance of like this, yes, I got it, you don't got it type thing because a lot of people don't get to make those decisions. So I had dreadlocks and I had a decent job doing what I was doing and my recruiter was like, well, if you cut your hair, okay, you can make this much, this much money a year, you can go to school, you'll get housing, you'll get food. And I was like, dang, I don't know about this. And he was like, I don't get this, man. He said, I'm gonna be real with you. I'll give you $20 to go get a haircut and you'll get this. And it's taking you this much to think. And I was like, man, you put it like that. So that's how I developed my whole concept of this is where you at, where you're trying to go, what's going to motivate you to get it. And it's really cool because that moment affects me to this day, like my daily living, you know. And I would say the fifth one would be um, when Zoe was like two and Zoe's mom was gone for like six, six, seven weeks. She was gone to Nevada. And it was really cool because that was the first time I was responsible for Zoe's all day. And when I had Zoe all day, it gave me a better appreciation for parenting. Because prior to that, I had Zoe on certain days in my house. So I would get Zoe like seven, eight o'clock in the morning, bring her home like eight, nine o'clock at night here to go with your mama. And when I had her the whole time, I was like, man, Zoe, I'm watching you at your mama house. Like, I don't even have my stuff together where you can live with me by myself and have you all day. And that whole feeding her, bathing her, making sure she taken care of, I got a, like a new appreciation for it because I would say throughout the, throughout the night, I got to make sure she's alive, she's safe. That's really something that's definitely underappreciated when parenting. You know, a lot of times we have our kids and it's like, all right, well, you with your mama, you're safe. It's like, man, the mama got a transition to having a kid. Mama got a transition to not having a kid. And I would say, I have the same thing. When I have Zoe, it takes me almost 24 hours to twin transition to having Zoe. And when I drop Zoe off, it takes me another 24 hours to transition. I don't have Zoe. So like now, I have to get Zoe. I have to see Zoe every day so I don't have that off-on switch. But when I go on vacation, it's cr critical because like, I need to not have Zoe the day before and the day after I get back on vacation because I need to transition to I right, daddy mode, no daddy mode. Because it's critical to have a off-on switch with everything in life. Because if you don't have an off-on switch, shoot, you own. You don't get no break. You never get a chance to refuel, you know. Cars have gas, you know, power. Air condition, you know, you keep your air condition on long, there's consequences. You keep the heat on too long, consequences. Conse consequences. You leave your oven on. So you leave your hair dryer. You leave your battery apparated electronic device. So same concept. So that moment I said, man, it, 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 that's real. I need to figure out realness. So that, that created like the way I live now. Like I don't do roommates ever. Zoe got to have her own room forever. She got to have her own space forever. Um, pretty much she got her own portion of the refrigerator. 
It's just the concepts of when she transitioned to my house, she needs to transition. She needs time. Same thing her mom. When she goes to her mom's house, she has to transition to being back with that particular parent. And that moment of me keeping Zoe really enlightened me on, wow. And that affects me to this day. And it's going to always affect me to the point when I talk to people about their kids, I get to have this conversation. So those like the top five moments in my life that changed me in the manner of who I am today. And a lot of times we don't think about that. You know, we say we do something just because, and that's not true. We do something for a reason. Something created change. You just don't start doing something, you know. I give you an example. You just don't stop drinking out the bottle, right? Something changed. Somebody stopped giving you the bottle. Yes. And that's how I feel like we definitely should continue to look at, like, what changed us? What didn't change us? What, what needs to change us? So that opened up that whole window of, like, opportunity. All right. Peace out, Holla.